Hey guys, and a very warm welcome back to What's For Tea, and I hope you're all very well indeed and having a fantastic day. Right guys, I was going to be making haggis bonbons, but by request, I've decided to pop up a cottage pie instead. This is very similar to shepherd's pie, but obviously instead of minced lamb, you would be using minced beef, so that's what we're using today. Now guys, it's quite important that you get the best ground or minced beef that you can afford. I mean, I always get my meat from a local butcher which can be in the higher price of things but you know it's well worth it in my opinion because obviously the mince is 90% where your flavour's coming from in this recipe but I mean you can use whatever you like, use whatever you know suits you but that's just my wee recommendation and guys you could also use corn mince in this if you wanted to keep it vegetarian you know that's just a mock meat if you're not you know too familiar with that Right guys, so this is what you're going to need if you want to give this particular recipe a go. First of all, you'll need garden peas, as many as you like. You'll need 100 grams of fine breadcrumbs. You'll also need 100 grams of finely grated parmesan cheese, one pint of beef stock, two tablespoons of Worcestershire sauce, one kilo of potatoes, which you're obviously going to peel and cut. Try and keep the potatoes the same size, guys. That way they'll cook, you know, at the same time. 500 grams of lean minced steak, 4 tablespoons of olive oil, 100 ml of red wine, 1 large chopped onion, 2 large diced carrots, 1 teaspoon of dried thyme, 2 tablespoons of tomato puree or tomato paste, 1 teaspoon of garlic paste, 3 tablespoons of plain or all-purpose flour, and a knob of butter, 100 ml of milk, and that's for your mashed potato, and salt and pepper for your own taste. Right guys, so let's go over to the cooker and see what we do next. The first thing you want to do guys is get a pan of boiling salted water on, quite a large pan, because this is quite a few potatoes. Pop your potatoes in and bring them up to the boil, and simmer them for about half an hour until they're tender. And then you can move on to the second half of your recipe, which is your mince. So in a large frying pan, guys, you want to pop some olive oil in, probably about two tablespoons, and get that nice and hot. Once it's warm, you just want to go and pop your mince in and just brown it all over. You don't need to stir it about too much, but if you feel it sticking, just give it a move around. You shouldn't have a lot of liquid, guys. That's another thing. If you use really, you know, inexpensive mince, you're going to end up with a lot of liquid in the bottom of this, which you don't want because that's all your flavours leaving then. So the better quality mince you use, you know, the less liquid you're going to have. And once it's browned all over, just lift it out and set it to the side. And then you can pop your carrots in to any remaining liquid that's in the pan. And just pop another wee bit of oil in if you find it too dry. Cook these for about 10 minutes, guys, till they start to soften up. I'm just popping another wee bit of oil in there. Once you've had your 10 minutes, you can pop your carrots in, guys. Sorry, your onion. <laughs> no paying attention. And cook these for about another 10 minutes, guys, and you'll discover at the end your carrots and your onions will be fairly soft. But don't worry too much, because it's going to have about half an hour in the oven anyway. And it's still got a bit of cooking to do, so I wouldn't be too concerned at this stage if it's not completely soft. So once they've had their time, guys, you want to go and add in your teaspoon of minced garlic. You can use fresh garlic, yeah, dried garlic, any kind of garlic. This is just the garlic paste I'm using. And just give it a stir through. Doesn't make any difference the flavour. I mean, garlic's garlic. It doesn't matter what you use. Once that's thoroughly uh, stirred in, guys, you can pop your flour in. I've put in three tablespoons of plain flour. This is going to act as a thickener for your gravy. So just pop your heat down a wee bit and just give it a good mix in. Once it's thoroughly combined, guys, you can pop on your tomato puree or your tomato paste, probably about two tablespoons. And again, just make sure the whole thing's thoroughly combined. Now you want your heat to be really low here, guys, because you don't want this um, sticking. Just give it a very gentle cook for about five minutes. I would keep an eye on this, keep it moving around just in case. 
During this time, guys, you can go back to your potatoes. And these should actually be ready by now. If they're not, just give them another five minutes. But mine's were ready. So you just want to drain them, drain the water out, and give them a good shake. And that's going to create a steam. Pop your lid back on and just let them dry out whilst you go on with the rest of your mixture. Those will keep nice and warm. So go back to your mixture and then you can pop your mince back in and also your stock and your wine. I've just mixed the wine in with the stock. So your stock, your wine and your mince all back into the pan and give it a good stir in. You can, you know, you can increase your heat at this stage guys, it doesn't need to be low anymore. Just make sure it's well mixed in. Add your teaspoon of thyme and your peas. Use as many peas as you like. Guys, I just used a couple of handfuls. That's more than enough here. Just give it a stir through again. And you want to pop in two tablespoons of Worcestershire sauce. I'm just using Lee and Perrins. <coughs> You can use other brands are available. <laughs> this is just the one I use. And again, just another wee stir through. And you want to go back to your potatoes, guys. And these are lovely and dry by now. Still piping hot, as you can see. You just want to pop in your milk, probably about 100 ml, and a good knob of butter. And just give them a good mash. I'm using my trusty old hand masher that I've had for about 200 years. These these potatoes are lovely and floury and dry, guys. And ideally, you you would be wanting these rather than the waxy ones. A nice dry potato like Maris Pipers or King Edwards, something like that. That's what I use, or even the red potatoes, the roosters. I just keep simmering this guys, you want to give this about half an hour and you'll see it all reduce, you know the liquid will reduce and it'll get a lot thicker. So give it about half an hour guys, just you know, just be patient with it. You don't want to take it off too soon. You don't want your mince to be tough and your veg to be raw. You'll know when it's getting ready anyway, guys, because you'll just see it all coming together. You don't want all of the moisture out because obviously you still want some gravy. So this is me. I'm quite happy with this, guys. So I'm going to stop here before it gets any thicker. And all you need to do is assemble it into your dish. This is my trusty Pyrex dish that you'll have seen before. So just pop your mince mixture into the bottom and top that with your mashed potato. Now some people will put grated cheese actually into their mashed potato but I find this quite rich so I'm not going to do that today. But I have added in some grated, finely grated parmesan into some fine bread crumbs and sprinkled that over the top and that gives it a lovely crust when it comes out of the oven. It's delicious. So that's you guys, you just want to pop it into your oven for about 30 to 35 minutes and when it comes out it'll look like this. And I know you can't really see, but it does have a lovely, sort of crispy, crunchy topping. Which I, I, I wish you could actually put your hand through the screen and, and feel this, but you can't. And just pop it out into a, pole, a bowl, guys, or a plate. And we've just had that, this with some uh, beetroot from the garden, which goes really well with this. And it was delicious. And as you can see, I mean, you get quite a lot out of this. It's deeper than it looks. This will serve about five people, guys. So, yeah delicious. So I hope you decide to give it a wee go guys and if you do don't forget to pop your comments you know down below and give me a wee thumbs up if you like this video. Again any suggestions or comments or anything feel free to leave them down below and if you haven't subscribed guys hit the subscribe button that way you can pop back and see us again. So that was it guys I hope you enjoyed that and uh, yeah it was fab so I hope to see you in the next one and until then Take care of yourselves and bye for now. Bye now.